Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, February 1st, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. We got a great guest diary today by Ismail and Mark about a malicious office document, actually an Excel file that installed the Keybase malware. Keybase is a keystroke logger, can also copy your clipboard. And what made this particular incident so interesting is that this malware used an exploit against the event viewer to actually bypass the user account control, which of course is supposed to protect some of of the things that the installer here does in order to get the malware on the system. The exploit also doesn't require any files on the system. It's a fileless exploit that of course makes it even more difficult to detect in particular after the fact because you don't have any artifacts on the disk and that you could sort of rely on in order to see what happens. And then it goes ahead and downloads Keybase and installs it on the system. Real nice walk through here uh, by Ismail and Mark about how they analyze this, what tools they use. Uh, for example, one tool that I really like is hyperanalysis.com. Makes it really easy to sort of get a quick snapshot of what's going on with a particular piece of malware. And earlier this week, a tool that Apple had on its website to check if a certain phone or iPad was activation locked, all of a sudden it disappeared. So it wasn't really clear why. Well, uh, there's a YouTube video now that essentially shows how this tool helped people to bypass activation lock. Now, this was not a trivial exploit. You had to take your device apart, including unsoldering a couple of chips. But uh, what you needed in order to make the exploit work was a serial number of an unlocked device and of course that tool that Apple offered did help you find that serial number that's why they discontinued at least for now this tool. And when I'm teaching intrusion detection, the two tools we discuss extensively are Wireshark and TSB Dump. And uh, one of the advantages of uh, TSB Dump, I always point out, is that it's less likely to be vulnerable. Wireshark had some pretty high profile and well known remote code execution vulnerabilities in the past. TSB Dump, not so much. Well, until today, Debian did release an update for TSB Dump that fixes a total of 32 different vulnerabilities. Now, many of them are denial of service vulnerabilities, but there are some arbitrary code execution vulnerabilities among the vulnerabilities being patched here. Apparently all versions prior to 4.9.0 are vulnerable. Not a lot of detail yet. I have to look through the individual CVs to see what they exactly fix, but uh, keep tuned. And of course, remember you can run TCP dump as a less privileged user with the dash capital Z switch, which will relinquish root privileges after TCP dump starts listening on the network. And if you have a printer that supports PostScript, that printer may allow attackers to capture print jobs. Now, this affects multiple manufacturers. The advisory lists HP, Lexmark, and Dell printers. The problem here is really a little bit more with PostScript itself, which allows you to overwrite how the show page command works. Show page is usually used to trigger displaying or printing a page, but you can actually overwrite that with additional code and that code can then be used to, for example, save a copy of the document or execute other functions on the printer. Pretty interesting exploit and probably affects many more printers than are listed in the advisory. Proof of concept code has been released. And now in this case, uh, cross-site request forging is actually used to then trick a victim to send the right command to the printer that will then either capture the jobs or exfiltrate the jobs to the attacker. And if you have touched a Linux system in the last couple of years, you probably ran into SE Linux. And if you are like uh, many sysadmins, the first thing you did is you disabled it because you probably didn't quite understand how to use it. And well, it got in the way of what you were trying to do with the system. 
Well, today I came across a real brief and painless blog post that outlines some of the probably most important features when you're trying to set up a web server. They're looking here at Nginx as an example and how to tune SLNX to work better for you. Also, interesting link in this article that I haven't seen before yet to stop disabling slnix.com, a pretty simple one page website that has, well, actually only two links, so one to a quick intro video of slnix and one to the page of Dan Walsh, who is sort of behind slnix with uh, lots of links from there, of course, how to learn how to use it. Well, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.